Hi there, Paul C from WZ2K.co.uk here with another video tutorial. What we're going to take a look at in this video is we're going to see how we can create a very edgy, uh, sort of low-key shot from a studio environment. So what I've got is the singer from a, a local band that we worked with and did a studio shoot a little while back. And we're going to use that, uh, that image as the basis for this tutorial. We're going to go through quite a few different techniques and tools to create the effect that I want. But at the end of it, we're going to end up with a very, very low-key, high-contrast image that has a real sort of metal kind of feel to it. So let's crack on. First thing I want to do is just crop this image down a little bit because at the moment it's a little off balance. So what I'm going to do is just choose the crop tool. Rebalance that. And what I'm kind of looking to do is make sure that the space on the sort of the left and the right hand side of, uh, of his arms is pretty much equal. That should uh, should do for me. I'm going to also bring it down ever so slightly so we get a bit more headroom above the shot. I click down once we're, we're happy with that. Now, if you can take a look at the image, you'll see that we've got a slight fall off of light from the right-hand side to the left-hand side. So we've got a, a sort of very dark grey over to an almost black over on the left-hand side. So what I need to do now is actually balance that up and bring the light in to be pretty pretty consistent across the shot. Reason for this is when we shot this in the studio environment, the uh, the singer, the guy here in the, the shoot, was a little bit close to the light on my uh, my right hand side, which is obviously giving us an uneven background. This is pretty quick and easy to fix inside Lightroom. We can just take the graduated filter tool, give it a click, take that over to the right hand side, and all I'm going to do is hold the shift key down on the keyboard, drag that over till I'm roughly halfway with the center line. Let go of that. And then what I can do is I can adjust the exposure to ensure that I've got a pretty consistent and even balanced lighting for the background. I'm not too worried about the right-hand side uh, of the face, mainly because I want that to be thrown into pretty much almost shadow anyway. So let's just adjust the exposure slider. Take that down. And I'm just doing this pretty much by eye until I can kind of see that the background is fairly consistent across the entire thing. I'm not too worried about It'd be a little light around your shoulders and things like that because like I say we're going to end up burning that down and actually removing most of the detail from the right hand side of the shot anyway so let's just adjust that a little bit more about minus 2.6 that should do and uh, click on done so here's the first part so you've got the shot to roughly where we want the light is pretty unimaginative but like I say we're going to concentrate on that in a moment first thing we want to do is adjust the lighting over the right hand side of the face and we're going to use the uh, the dodge tool or the dodge brush to actually make that adjustment. So first things first, let's just choose the adjustment brush. And once we choose the adjustment brush, we've got a range of options we can work with. And you can see we've got the temperature, tint, exposure and so on. We can also just choose some basic presets. So if I give it a click on this little arrow, you can see we've got a range of different options. Now, these are just predefined settings that ship with Lightroom that allow you to do various different things uh, within the editing package. Obviously, you can fine tune any of these and you can save them as your own presets. But what we're going to do is we're going to choose the burn option. We'll leave it with the exposure set to a value of minus uh, a third of a stop at this point in time because we're going to paint the effect in to start off with. Then we're going to adjust the effect to get it exactly as we want. So I'm just going to use a smaller brush. I'm just using the left bracket key on the keyboard to reduce the size of my brush. And I'm just going to paint loosely over the right hand side of the image. Not being too too worried about exactly what I'm doing there, just roughly going over it. Now once I let go, you can see you've got this little circle, this little pin. And what that denotes is exactly what we've actually created or what we've painted onto the image. And by holding the mouse over it, you can see we get this red masking effect. Very similar to using the quick masks inside Photoshop. But what this does is just effectively shows us where we've painted the effect on. So you can see I've missed a little bit down towards the bottom. So I'm just going to go back over, paint over that area. Now the difference with this compared to something like Photoshop is that by painting over this red kind of masked area, it's not increasing the effect, it's not doubling that up. All it's doing is painting in the areas that we're missing. So I can just go back over, make sure I've got everything that I want, go back over it as many times as I want. And as you can see, I've missed a little bit down the bottom right-hand corner. We'll just go and paint that in. 
So now we've got roughly the area that I want covered. So now if I go up to any of these sliders and start adjusting them, we'll see that only that area within the picture will be affected with the changes that we're going to make. So if I adjust this exposure, you should see the right hand side starting to get darker and darker. Let's take that down by 2.2, that's, that's fine. Now we can still see a lot of his arm and his side of his face, which I don't really want, but I can only go so far with these adjustment sliders. And as you can see, you know, if I take that right the way down, we haven't lost everything. We've still got some of the detail in there. So what we can do, let's put that back up to about 2.2, is I can go and create another mask over the top of that and build the effects up one on top of the other. So I can apply the same effect multiple times and I can adjust each one of those effects independently, which is a great way of working with inside Lightroom. And the beauty of this over something like Photoshop is that every single edit that we make on this image and any other image we work with is completely non-destructive. So we can go back at any point and change and adjust and tweak and get exactly what we want without damaging the original underlying image, which is fantastic as something that I wish, like, um, wish Photoshop would actually pick up on. So we'll click on done for that. That's the first one of our, our um, painting on adjustments. So now what we're gonna do is go back and choose the adjustment brush a second time. And as you can see, it defaults back to the exposure of minus a third of stop. Let's go back over the image and paint back over again. Covering pretty much the same areas that I did last time. Once I'm fairly happy with what I've done, I can let go and you can see now we've got two of the little pin marks on the image. One is a, a white halo, the other one is a solid white. The solid white was the previous one we did, that's not the currently active one, whereas the one with the, the black dot in the center is the currently active uh, brush that we're working with. So you can see I missed quite a big chunk down the middle there, so I'm just going to go back down, quickly paint that back in, go back over and just double check. I'll stick off and make sure everything's right. Okay, so we've got what we want. So now if I adjust that, we're adjusting the second adjustment that we've applied to it. Right, if I just go back over and paint a little bit more, you know, the areas that I'm not happy with. Yep, that should do for me. We click on done again, and that's applied the, the second effect on there for us. So we've done two lots of adjustment layers where we've adjusted, or adjustment, uh, using the adjustment brush, where we've adjusted the actual exposure, but only on that right-hand side, and each one is non-destructive and has its own masking area that is applying it to this particular image. So the next stage is we're going to desaturate this image, we're going to take it to black and white, we're going to start adjusting clarity, contrast, and so on, and apply a few other effects to the image. What I'm going to do now is I'm just going to zoom in so we can see what we're working with a little bit closer. Now, as I said, this was shot in a studio environment, so we've got a pretty sharp image to start off with, but we're going to really emphasize quite a lot of the features and the skin. I give it a really harsh, low-key effect with a real high contrast. So let's just switch this over to black and white to start off with. And as you see, it's a pretty flat black and white, which is what you'll generally get when you just switch over from the color option to the black and white option inside Lightroom. But it's a good starting point. Next thing we want to do is if we start adjusting the clarity, you will find we'll increase the contrast considerably and it'll pull out some serious detail all over his face. So we'll find all the, the pores will start to stand out. Any sort of little blemishes on the skin will really stand out. So let's start adjusting that clarity. Let's take it quite extreme up to about 80. And as you can see, we've got a real extreme contrast now, bringing out all the detail. This works fantastically when, well with men, especially if they've got beards and things like that. It really does pump out the, the detail and the contrast and sharpens the image up considerably. Obviously, if you're shooting women, it doesn't work quite so well because obviously any blemishes will be emphasized considerably. So you'll just tend to find that if you're shooting women, you'll normally take the clarity down to an opposite. So if we just take that down to a minus figure, you'll see what it does is it starts adding a sort of a soft focus kind of effect to it and softens all the skin off, which is a good way of doing the opposite to what we're trying to do with this image, which is soften and hide blemishes and wrinkles and things like that. Okay, let's put that back out to where we had it before, which is about plus 80, giving us that real harsh, strong contrast.
Okay, so let's increase the contrast even more over the side of his face to give a real harsh separation between the both sides. So what I'm going to do is, first of all, I'm going to start pumping up the whites. Now we're going to find as we do this, we'll start to get a little bits of areas blown out where it's quite hot from the main light. But that's okay, we'll bring some of that detail back. So let's take that to about plus 50. Now you can see we've got a little bit of blowout that we're kind of losing some of the detail. We can bring some of that back if we just adjust the highlight slider and that'll just retain the detail. So let's just take that to about, about minus 12 or 13 should be quite a good, good point. Okay, so we've increased the contrast over the side of his face. We've removed any of the, the problems we've got with blown highlights and we're looking pretty good. Okay. Now you can probably see on the video that we've still got a little bit of, of detail over on this right hand side of the image. We can get rid of that if we start adjusting the black point slider. We don't have to adjust this too much. About minus 10 is pretty much spot on. So you can see now that we've thrown all this side of the image, all the right hand side of the image into pretty much darkness. Let's take that, zoom that back out so you can see a bit better what we're doing. So we've got a, a real high contrast image and we've blown the entire side right the way to blackness. But one of the problems we've got is the eye looks a little bit dull. It's not been illuminated that well. So what we could do is bring a little bit of lightness back into the eye socket, increase the whiteness of the eye, and just generally make the eye stand out and pop a little bit. We don't want to go too far, because otherwise you end up looking like a little bit of an alien. But we can use the adjustment brush and use a technique like we did earlier on. So let's just choose the adjust adjustment brush. Reduce my brush size down using the left bracket key. And let's just zoom in to about three to one. Okay. All we're going to do is set the exposure to a plus value this time. And start painting over the eye. If we take our mouse over you can see this is the area that we've got masked off. Let's just bring that right into the corner of the eye. So now if we start adjusting the exposure, you can see that starts to lighten the eye sockets. Let's just go back out so we can see what that effect is going to have as we make the adjustments. Like I said, we don't want to go too far, but 1.2, 1.3 looks pretty good. Let's just close that down. So let's undo that. There's the before. There's the after. So you can see the eye starts to pop out a little bit. Gives it a bit of a unnerving look to it. Okay, we're almost there. Let's just take that back out so we can see the entire image. Looking pretty good. Okay, what we're going to do now is we're just going to quickly use another effect on the image just to give it a, a slight vignette. Now that's not really going to affect anything that we can see over the dark dark areas but it will bring the detail in or bring the shadows in around the lower part of the body which I don't really want to stand out too much. So if we click on the effects panel and we'll just scroll down a little bit. What we can do is we can set the amount of vignetting that we want to work with. So if we set a minus value we'll introduce dark edges to the image. If we increase that to a plus value we start to create a lightened corner. So let's just bring that down. And you should notice now, down on the bottom left hand side of the image, that'll start to darken that down and we'll lose some of the detail just to give it a, a sort of real fall off of shadow, which is exactly what I want. Okay, almost there. Let's just zoom back in one to one. And what we're going to do now is we're just going to pump up some of the detail on this. So let's just open the detail panel up. And we're just going to increase the sharpening. We're going to find, because we've got such high clarity and such extreme contrast on the face, that when we start making sharpening adjustments, it's really going to bring out the detail considerably. So let's just take this up probably more than I normally would. I'm going to take it up to about 75. So we go back. There's the before. There's the after. So it gives it a real sharp, gritty look to the image. There's a couple of little blemishes that I'm not too happy with on the skin, so I'm just going to quickly zoom in 
even closer again and we'll just go in and choose the spot removal tool again we can use the left and right bracket keys to increase or decrease the size of the spot healing brush I'm just going to position that roughly where I'm happy with it make the brush a bit smaller do the same again on the next blemish yep that's looking pretty good let's go up to the head there's a couple of little bits and pieces up here that I wanted to take out so we just quickly adjust these just so they stop distracting your eye when you look at the, the difference in contrast between the light and the dark sides okay that looks pretty good like I said, I could spend a lot more time. I probably would if I was doing this for the, uh, the actual client themselves, but this is just a quick tutorial to sort of take you through the different techniques that we use. Okay, we're happy with that. Click on Done. And that's pretty much it. Let's just zoom back out. As you can see, we've got a very, very low contrast image that's got a real gritty feel to it that works fantastically well for doing things like band promo shots for bands that are sort of metal bands, extreme metal bands, you know, that kind of thing. Well, I hope you found this tutorial useful. I hope you can put it to use in your own photography sessions. Until next time, we'd love to see you over at the wz2k.co.uk forums and website. Leave some feedback. Let us know what you think of the, the tutorial. And if you've got ideas for tutorials, we'd love to hear from you. And if we think they're good ideas, we'll happily put some tutorials together for you guys. Until next time, take care. I've been Paul C, WZ2K. Cheers.